Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look today at my season predictions or my lineup predictions for the Calgary Flames. We're going to be taking a look at the Flames in today's video. So the Calgary Flames are in a weird spot. They're in a division that's kind of in a rebuild of itself. I mean, pretty much everybody but the Vegas Golden Knights you could argue is still in a rebuild. I mean, the Vancouver Canucks are kind of coming out of one. You could say what you want about Seattle and what you predict them to be. But the Calgary Flames also fall in that category where they could have a really good season and potentially be second in that division. Or they could be as very much at the bottom of that division. So looking at the Calgary Flames and their lineup, specifically their forward lines, you're going to get an idea of just where the Calgary Flames sit. So you're looking at their top six. You got Johnny Hockey Goudreau, uh, Hamp, uh, Elias Lindholm, and Brady Kachuk. So uh, Matthew Kachuk. I always get them confused. So that's your top line. That's a pretty good top line. Um, there was a lot of rumors that Goudreau may not be here. So that's a good sign that Goudreau is still here at this point. Um, long term, I don't necessarily know. But going into this season, I kind of like their top line. It is pretty solid. Now, the second line, we're seeing a couple of changes here. You have Andrew Mangiapane, Sean Monaghan, and Blake Coleman. Blake Coleman coming in from the Tampa Bay Lightning, winning two consecutive Stanley Cups. The big question about Blake Coleman when he was signed by the Flames was, is he going to be able to do what he did in the bottom six with the Tampa Bay Lightning? Will he be able to produce at that same level with more minutes, with more difficult competition in the top six on a second line? Sean Monaghan has to stay healthy. And Andrew Mangiapane, I think, is a nice addition. But again, kind of like Blake Coleman, is he a top six forward? And we're going to get more of an idea of that in a full 82-game season with him. Now, the bottom six is actually pretty solid, too. You look at their third line. The guy they kept over Mark Giordano, Dylan Dubé. He's coming back. Michael Backlund and Brett Ritchie. I have Brett Ritchie on the third line. They had him listed as a scratch pad player or a guy on the fourth line. I think he's more valuable than a fourth line player I really like I like a guy like Brett Ritchie and he's a guy that I think may not add the same spark of scoring he did in the top six at the end of last season but he could add some depth scoring on that third line with some talented guys in Backland and Dubé you also have on the fourth line just a pure grit line that's really you know you know Daryl Sutter is coaching your team when you have Mila Lucic uh, Tyler Pitlick and Tyler and Trevor Lewis Trevor Lewis is still playing in the NHL, so Lucic and Lewis, guys that he had back in L.A. back in the day with the L.A. Kings, are now a member of the Calgary Flames. No real surprise there. Now getting to the defense, this is where things get very interesting because they've had a couple of key departures over the past couple of seasons. I mean, you obviously their captain, Mark Giordano, a huge hole on that left side, now vacant. They've lost guys like Travis Hamnick. I mean... They've lost TJ, uh, guys like TJ Brody. I mean, they have lost some real critical, you could argue, top four defensemen. Those are three big names right there that they've lost. So they've replaced some of those guys. Some of those guys have been draft picks that have developed, maybe haven't developed the way they had hoped. So looking at your defensemen, you have some interesting names. You have Noah Hannafin and Rasmus Anderson as your top pair. Now, according to Daily Faceoff, they had uh, Chris Tanev as the top right shot defenseman. I really like Rasmus Anderson. He's going to be their number one minute muncher this year. He's going to be the top pairing guy on your right side. The second pairing, you got Nikita Zadorov, the big defenseman that played in Chicago last season. He comes over to the Calgary Flames, signs a contract. I like him there, but again, as a top four defenseman, there's a hole there, absolutely. Now looking at your second pair, you got Chris Tanev on the right side. I like him as a second pairing defenseman. Maybe even a third pairing defenseman if you're talking about a a strong playoff caliber team, which it doesn't necessarily look like the Calgary Flames are, uh, but at that spot, I guess I can live with that, again, as long as he stays healthy. He is in his mid-30s now. Huso Valamaki and Oliver Chillington. Now, ideally, you would have seen these two guys develop into top four defensemen, which, especially at the beginning of this season, will not be the case, especially with Daryl Sutter. So I have them as third-pairing defensemen. They need to show something in the league. Uh, Valamaki and Chillington just haven't developed the way you would like, specifically Chillington. You know, a former first-round pick, you're hoping for more from him. He just hasn't necessarily gotten there 
at this point. And really, there are no depth forwards, so I didn't really mention any. But for defensemen, we have some guys to look at. Guys like Andy Walensky, who came over from the Anaheim Ducks. I actually liked him in Anaheim. And you have Connor Mackey, and that's just a young draft pick who is going to maybe make a name for himself during training camp this year and, and maybe jump into that top six defensive role for the Flames. And then in between the pipes, you have Jacob Markstrom and Dan Vladar, the guy they picked up from the Boston Bruins. Um, honestly, I like their goaltending for the most part. Uh, Jacob Markstrom's a good goalie. We know what the Vancouver Canucks lost at him last year, how big of a loss he was. So there is some concern about that contract long term and maybe injury issues. And again, in a full 82 game schedule, can they rely on Dan Vladar as the second goaltender? Because for the most part, he's been the third goaltender throughout his career in Boston. So now coming into Calgary with a more prominent role, there is some uh, level of concern. Maybe he hasn't proven enough in the NHL to where he is a solid second goaltender or in the backup position. So with that said, the Calgary Flames, I think it's going to be a rough year for the Flames, if I'm going to be honest. Even in that Pacific division, they may give themselves a run. Um, but at the end of the day... Despite how weak that Pacific division is, I think there's just too many teams that are better. I, I mean, Vegas and Edmonton seem like two teams that are playoff teams. And then take your pick between teams like the up-and-coming LA Kings, uh, the Vancouver Canucks, who definitely loaded up this year, and you still have the wild card in the Seattle Kraken. Those are three teams for legitimately, potentially, one or two playoff spots going into the playoffs in 2022. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Calgary Flames? What do you think of my lineups for the Calgary Flames? Let me know in the description down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you again next time.